Well, hey, my friends, Chris Mark is here with you for the Miles Franklin channel on Tuesday, September 18th. And I'm excited to have a new guest onto our channel today, which is Chris Powell of GATA. I'm sure a lot of our audience is familiar with GATA and a lot of the work they've done digging in and uncovering some of the facts and evidence behind the gold and silver manipulation. Um, I've been reading Gata and Chris and Bill Murphy for years. So, Chris, it's great to finally have you on the show. Excited to talk to you, get your thoughts on the gold and silver market. So, how are you doing today, my friend? Oh, I'm delighted to be with you, Chris. Thank you. Well, yeah, well, thanks for being on here. And I say let's dive right in. Certainly exciting times where we've seen the commitment of traders reports indicate that the banks might now be long metal. Uh, at the same time, we've also seen the silver mint run out, or the U.S. mint run out of silver eagles. Also, we have an election and a lot of political chaos coming up. So, given your great history following these markets and everything that you've seen, I'm curious as you wake up today and factor it all in, what your gut tells you and where you think we're at and what might be really going on behind the scenes. Well, uh, someday uh, the governments that want to suppress the monetary metals prices are bound to run out of the uh, physical metal that they need to do it. There's always some need for physical metal. Uh, the metal has run out and uh, terminated previous price suppression uh, schemes, uh, ran out with the uh, London Gold Pool in uh, the spring of 1968, for example. Um, we always hope uh, that <laughs> we're just on the eve of its of its running out again. I'm I'm afraid though that uh, only this uh, dispersal of of government uh, um, metal uh, reserves uh, is going to end the gold price suppression scheme. The mining industry uh, is too scared to uh, to get involved uh, <clears throat> in pro pro protesting the scheme. The Developing countries that uh, uh, produce the monetary metals are too afraid of uh, the developed countries to right. uh, to question it. Uh, retail investors are just not uh, interested enough, and they're easily misled into buying, uh, you know, paper derivatives uh, of gold and silver. So, uh, if uh, <clears throat> things uh, uh, explode uh, today or tomorrow, nobody will be happier than. Uh, than those of us in, in Gata, but uh, we've been at this for almost 20 years, and uh, uh, we don't uh, we don't count on uh, a brighter tomorrow. My <laughs> general uh, out outlook for the future is uh, what uh, George Orwell said in 1984: If you uh, uh, you know want a vision of uh, the future, just imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. And uh, I think that's uh, that's entirely possible too. Yeah, and I, it, it definitely is a tricky dynamic where certainly the fundamentals scream one thing and then the price certainly has stayed lower. And I think for longer than I think most in the precious metals community might have thought. Although along those lines, one of the things I've always been looking for is that if we have, I hear estimates, uh, Bill Holter and others say as many as 500 paper claims for each physical ounce, um, which certainly seems unsustainable in the long term to me, and I think <laughs> you and others as well. And I did find it interesting that I talked with Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin, and since the mint ran out of silver eagles, he said that he has seen increased premiums. And then I'm guessing, Chris, that you probably also read in Ted Butler's column this past weekend he mentioned he's even hearing slight delays in the retail procurement of silver in 1,000 ounce bars, which certainly if we see that in the institutional and the industrial market, certainly was a sign I've been looking for. I know you talk with Harvey Oregon as well, and anything that you've been hearing in terms of the market tightening up a little bit? Well, you know, we've <clears throat> we've seen developments like that before, and you know, in the short term, they may have bumped the price a little. In the long term, they have not uh, undone uh, the uh, gold price suppression policy of the Western Central Banks. Um, so I, I, I don't 
pay an awful lot of attention to to that, and I I try not to uh, contrive uh, hopes for uh, for people because I I don't want to mislead them. All that I think GATA is good for is the compilation of the documentation of largely surreptitious central bank intervention in the monetary metals markets in order to control the price, uh, prevent the metals from uh, competing successfully with uh, with government currencies. Uh, we come up with uh, new documentation almost every, every month. Uh, lately, there's been a lot uh, out of the uh, the Bank for International Settlements, uh, which is uh, maintaining a huge uh, gold swap and derivative book. Our consultant uh, on the BIS, uh, Robert Lam Lamborn, follows them very closely. We, mm -hmm. we get a monthly report uh, out of him. Um, uh, I mean, this, this is official record of, of intervention by the uh, gold broker for the central banks, uh, the BIS, uh, and yet we you know, we have failed at getting the mainstream financial news organizations from paying any attention to this. The, uh, the World Gold Council will never, never mention it. Uh, gold mining companies themselves uh, turn away from it. Uh, the uh, so-called analysts of the gold and silver market uh, will not, uh, will not touch it. Uh, when we, we, we look at the, <clears throat> the markets today, we're just looking at illusions, uh, uh, yep, really yep. holograms. The, the the only thing that matters in the markets today is uh, is the intervention of uh, by central banks and uh, even when you you have the documentation in hand when it's 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 posted on government internet sites uh, you, you really can't get people to to look at it it's just it's just too scary it would just overturn their worldview. It, it is incredible how there is no shortage of documentation. One of my favorites is the trans, some of those trader transcripts from the Deutsche Bank case a couple of years ago, especially because my background, I was uh, running a specialist post trading equity options on the New York Stock Exchange. And I remember my compliance guy often telling us that two out of every three things I typed were going to be read by someone. And the comments uh, that they've collected on those transcripts alone, which, you know, not just acknowledging the manipulation, but almost bragging about it. Um, so yes, like you point out, um, there is a lot of evidence there, which I think you've done an incredible effort of collecting. And for the folks perhaps uh, maybe that aren't familiar with GATA or people who are just reading Wall Street Journal and watching CNBC, that probably haven't really considered or even thought of a lot of what you found out. What would you say to someone who's hearing this for the first time and maybe the first place to start if they wanted to dig in or really a couple of the most powerful bullet points that you guys have come up with through all of your research that would really give someone a few things to start with and get a grasp of just how distorted the situation has become and also how you've documented that so they can so that there is evidence out there what would be the the main things that you would share with someone well the first thing i would tell somebody is don't believe me uh, don't uh, uh, you know take uh, me for having any particular credibility i would refer people to the to the documentation uh, and <clears throat> urge them to read it and make their own own judgment uh, we've collected uh, a lot of it. We've linked to government uh, internet sites where the documentation resides. Uh, we have a, a particular documentation page on GATA's internet site, gata.org. Um, and uh, in our uh, page that's titled The Basics, we have a, a couple of pretty good summaries of the documentation. Perhaps that's the place to uh, to start because it puts things in in context, <clears throat> but uh, basically, we just beg people to uh, to look at the documentation, uh, decide whether it's uh, genuine or forgeries. Um, if uh, they think it's forgeries, they might want to consider why it's on uh, the government's own internet sites uh, uh, presented as official documentation. But um, <clears throat> I, I just try to get people to look at the documents and draw their own conclusions. Perhaps ask a a few questions. Uh, I've found over the last 20 years that if you uh, ask the uh, questions uh, specifically enough of uh, 
of government officials about uh, intervention in the monetary metals uh, markets. Uh, they will just uh, run away from you at light speed. Um, you, uh, you won't get them to to answer if you ask the right questions. The problem is that uh, the mainstream financial press won't do it. Uh, and the so-called uh, market analysts uh, in gold and silver uh, won't do it. They, they much prefer uh, consulting their crystal balls and their charts and their Elliott waves and their you know, dojis and, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, they're, they're much more comfortable with that. Uh, they will not put any critical question about the monetary metals to any official source. And uh, uh, to me, uh, anything less than that is just a waste of time. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that. I can certainly confirm my own experience again when I was working on Wall Street that once I started getting into gold and silver, it was got to the point where eventually it was clear that mainstream Wall Street just didn't want to hear it. Um, yet at the same time, I think it's an incredible thing to be digging into and going through the research that you and Bill do over there at GATA because... Certainly, while people are frustrated over, uh, some people might be frustrated, maybe some are happy they're getting metals at a cheaper price, but certainly over the last seven years, when the price has been going down, maybe not as much fun, yet for people who had been following some of the things that you've pointed out decades ago, interesting to keep in mind, gold still was under 300 bucks back in 2000 now around 1200 and certainly the conditions in place that would make it seem logical that at some point when this manipulation is overrun that prices would be higher um so it's it's interesting because you're right it isn't presented in the mainstream yet certainly pretty darn relevant from an investing standpoint in my opinion um because perhaps the last question i'll run by you here chris is that Again, it was interesting to me that we saw silver basically, I think it actually got below $14 on September 11th. And it was interesting when the mint ran out, they cited increased demand. So it's kind of two different stories. One where supposedly no one has any interest in gold and silver. And yet behind the scenes, we see central banks repatriating gold. In the past year, we've seen some of the mainstream investors, Ray Dalio and a few others, uh, even investing in gold. So despite what the media and the banks tell us, it sure seems like <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that are going out of their way to get gold. And certainly it sounds like going forward, you would expect that to continue and that we're not talking about some useless relic as Warren Buffett suggests and that there is very much a demand for gold in some of the larger customers out there. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, you know, the problem for us, Chris, is we have a North American perspective, particularly United States perspective. And, uh, you know, this is the headquarters of the empire of uh, dollar imperialism. And uh, we just uh, tend not to to see this, uh, there's just less interest in the monetary metals uh, uh, in this place than there is uh, around the world. If you, you go to Asia or even Europe, you'd find much more interest in the monetary metals, especially now that much of the rest of the world is uh, complaining about the uh, weaponization of the U.S. dollar and looking for another uh, means of uh, transacting uh, international trade. Um, I don't think we can judge the gold and silver markets by attitudes in the, the United States. Uh, most people in the United States, uh, even in Canada, I think are clueless about the, the monetary metals in the rest of the world. It's, it's, uh, it's different. Um, I think there's very much increased physical demand uh, uh, coming out of uh, China and, and India. And, uh, you know, I have some hope that uh, eventually that will break through uh, into the paper market and and <clears throat> change the paper market uh, close to overnight, but we we can't judge the monetary metals markets uh, from a uh, exclusively uh, North American uh, perspective. Yeah, and certainly again, it's interesting. I know certainly in the Wall Street community and often in the U.S., there's a bit of a focus on just the United States, whereas 
it it's helpful i find to remember that look who the largest creditor financing the u.s is you see china and russia making seemingly arrangements to circumvent the dollar on a daily basis now and like you point out both countries uh i actually even hear some wild reports about how much gold they actually may have of course who knows but i think certainly between the evidence you've compiled and everything else we're seeing out there it sure seems like there is still demand for gold and again i'm just grateful that you've done every you and get bill have done everything you've done with gata and bringing a lot of this information to light that people can look up we'll post that link to the basics page below the interview and just last uh, last thing, can you let folks know where they can find you? And certainly if they'd like to support what you're doing or get involved in any way, how people could do that. Oh, sure, Chris. Thank you. Um, uh, Gata's internet site is gata.org. Uh, we are a uh, <clears throat> federally tax-exempt uh, nonprofit uh, educational and civil rights organization uh, uh, approved uh, for tax exemption by the uh, Internal Revenue Service. We run a, uh, an internet site that uh, uh, submits uh, uh, dispatches to its uh, supporters uh, almost every day, dispatches that are of interest to uh, people who are concerned about the gold and silver markets. Uh, sometimes they're news stories, sometimes they're commentaries people can uh, enroll uh, on our mailing list our email list uh, at our internet sites uh, internet site rather um, we are grateful for any uh, contributions uh, from uh, our supporters uh, there's a uh, a link on uh, on our homepage for people who would like to send us some help uh, by check or uh, credit card um, and uh, occasionally we get a little support out of uh, mining companies and mm -hmm. uh, investors here and there. Uh, at least it's it's been enough to keep the lights on uh, in, in recent months. But <laughs> the depression in the uh, in the sector right now is uh, is is becoming pretty hurtful. So I'm hoping that uh, people will have some sympathy for us and, uh, and make some contributions. Uh, uh, but uh, we mean to keep the uh, the flag uh, flying on behalf of free and transparent transparent markets and uh, limited and accountable government. And uh, I hope people will always be interested in that. Yeah, and I would certainly encourage people to go visit GATA and especially the the newsletter that you mentioned you send out, which I get every day now and I think is really an excellent resource for people, especially if you've been not to bash CNBC, but maybe I'll bash CNBC. I mean, I, I just found that the news is so different from what's actually going on. And here, you guys on a daily basis put a lot of the links so that people, like you said, can go out, read for themselves, see what makes sense. And for all those people who are frustrated when things like Bernie Madoff happen and the SEC dropped the ball, or we see CFTC not <laughs> responding to any of the allegations and I mean, in some ways, you and, and Bill are really filling the role of some regulation in this market and bringing some truth to light, which, especially in these times, I think is incredibly important for investors and people just in general. So again, uh, go check out GATA. And um, it's really a great resource you provide. And Chris, I just want to thank you again for coming on. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. And uh, hopefully we have some good pricing action in the near future. Oh, thank you very much, Chris.